Alright, so up until now we have seen how to use Newton's second and third. So up until now we have seen how to use Newton's three laws um, to solve classical mechanics problems and predict the motion of uh, bodies and system of bodies. But the problem with the Newtonian approach that we have described is that it doesn't work effectively when we have position dependent forces. This is because Newton's second law is a time dependent differential equation, right? So if I were to write Newton's second law, right, so Newton's second law, well, you all know it, it's mass times the second derivative of position, which is equal to the force, right? And for now, we have seen a force that is time dependent, right? So, um, I don't know, I could give you a random function with respect to time, and you could simply use Newton's second law to solve it. However, uh, because here we have a time derivative, right? This is a, a second order time derivative. A problem arises when we have, say, a position dependent force, right? So uh, uh, we usually write it like this. This is a vector valued function which has a vector input. But this, what that essentially means is here we have our two coordinate axes and this means that the function f of r assigns a force to every position vector r. So let's say that we have a point right here. It has position vector r in our uh, frame of reference. And actually I should have changed colors. Uh, but anyways, then the, uh, the, the function gives us the force at this point, right? So say, say it acts here in this direction. This is f of r, all right? So how do we apply Newton's second law to solve this problem, to solve this differential equation? Well, we will actually derive for now the, an important result called the work energy theorem in one dimensions, all right? So let me rewrite Newton's uh, second law in one dimension and I'll write it as a derivative of velocity. All right, so Newton's second law modified uh, is as follows. M dv dt, remember we're in one dimension so we have no vectors, only scalars, is equal to f of x, all right? So x is the position in y direct in one direction. So here we have say the x direction. We're in one dimension. So here's the particle, uh, and uh, this is the origin, and this is x. All right, and it gives us the the, the force, uh, which again remember since we're in only one direct in one dimension, it can only act in this direction right here, f of x. Okay, so we still haven't solved our problem because we have a time derivative and a position dependent thing, thing, function. <laughs> um, so what can we do? Well, how do you solve a differential equation of this sort? Well, we've seen that integrating directly often helps, so why not try it out? So m times integral. Now what are we integrating over? So say the force acts on the particle. Uh, when it has position xa and xb. So maybe this is xa and this is xb, right? And the force is acting here in, in, in this interval. Um, then we're integrating from xa to xb, right? Uh, of dv dt. What are we integrating uh, with, with respect to? Position. Right? Why? Because our force is given in terms of position. Um, so f of x, dx. What now? 
what now? Uh, maybe you remember from, hopefully remember from kinematics that dx is none other than v dt, right? d d d. Distance covered by a particle in an infinitesimal time interval is equal to the velocity of the particle, the instantaneous velocity of the particle, multiplied by that time interval. Because remember, if this time interval is small enough, you know, it's infinitesimally small, the velocity is constant, all right? It's the instantaneous velocity. All right, so we, we substitute this right here, and we get a very nice result, actually. Um, so what do we get? We get the in, uh, m times integral from xa to xb of dv dt times v dt. Okay, that's good. Why? Because v is a time depend. Uh, this is time dependent on the derivative with respect to time. We're integrating over time. That's good. This is equal to x a, x b, f of x dx. All right. Going on now, we use uh, the chain rule. Now, a typical physicist might actually do this horrible thing in the eyes of uh, a mathematician. And that would be um, just cancelling off these two. Uh, I will not do that uh, because we prefer rigor in our lectures. So um, what do we do? We note that the derivative with respect to time of 1 half v squared is none other than v dv dt. Hmm. So this integral becomes m, the integral. Um, uh, okay, here is the first thing. We should, since we changed our um, integration variable, we should also change our um, limits, our upper and lower limits of integration. So tb is the time at which the particle is at position b and uh, xb, and ta is the time at which the particle is at position xa. All right, so this becomes the uh, derivative tb ta of one half v squared dt, and now we can use uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus, um, and, and we finally get well. What's the integral of this of a derivative of something with respect to time? Well, it's just that something uh, eval valued at tb and ta. So we finally get 1 half m, the velocity squared at time tb is simply the velocity b squared, all right? Uh, so I'll just note vb is just the velocity at time tb, all right? Or the velocity at position xb. They are the same thing defined as. Okay, so uh, minus 1 half m va squared equals this integral right here. So if you know the expression for the force, you can easily use this, um, you can easily find this integral. And this is a very important result. It's, it's really important. It's called the work energy theorem. Why is it called that? So uh, this is the uh, work energy theorem. This is very important because it offers, it doesn't offer any new physical meaning because remember we derived it from Newton's second law, but for certain problems, especially when the position is uh, position, uh, when the force is position dependent, this is extremely useful. Uh, whoops. This is very useful. Um, why work energy? Uh, because this integral right here uh, is called the work done by f of x, right? Um, because it this force moves the particle from position x a to x b, and the integral of the force with respect to position from x a to x b is the quantity that we call work. And it is equal to this difference right here. This is the difference in kinetic energy. 
So this is the difference in kinetic energy because each one of these individual terms is the kinetic energy at a certain point. All right? So this uh, first term right here is the kinetic energy at B, at position XB, and this is the kinetic energy at position XA. The difference is the difference in kinetic energy, and it is equal to the work done by the force. This is always, always true because Newton's second law holds, right? And um, so, yeah, in the next lessons, we'll look at how to drive the same result in higher dimensions because remember, we limited ourselves to one dimension right now, and then we'll use it to solve some interesting problems.